I'm at Aero 2025 with Josh from Four Flight. Josh looks after basically everything outside of the United States and all sorts of details. Josh, um, it's been a year since we spoke. Um, tell me what, what's going on. I know there's, there's, some, there's been some changes, there's some, some offers, some, some other things. Bring me up to date. Yeah, no problem. So we'll start with a couple different things. Um, first off, we started with a partnership with IAOPA Europe, which encompasses all the different affiliates um, of AOPA organizations throughout Europe. So now we have different member benefit discounts um, in there for their members. We're also going to be working with them on different educational um, opportunities in different places, adding their events into our Discover tab within ForeFlight, um, which is the place really Really to try to build community um, across the aviation industry and show all of these events that only exist on various websites. Um, so we're really looking forward to that opportunity with their members. Um, as far as uh, different pieces throughout the app, you know, we've continued to focus on safety um, pieces in the application, different features around that, um, and consolidating different mm -hmm. features down. Like for instance, um, on the aeronautical layer, you know, we've added the aero drawer, which is on the side. So this came out last year, and the real benefit of this is now all of your aeronautical settings are in one place. And the reason that we use the aeronautical layer is this is your digital map that's going to make sure to change airspace and things like that every 28 days so you don't have those airspace incursions, which we know is a big deal, especially when paper charts or, you know, printed charts are only once a year from a lot of government entities. Um, even the UK CAA says you've got to have a moving map in some capacity at this point. There's some proposals at the moment where they will they are looking to make it a regulation that moving map is not only trained on but examined during the test, which is a great thing because if you want people to learn something, you need to test on it. Um, and it so, so that's a really good thing. And personally, I haven't flown with a, a paper chart for many years now. I mean, yeah. it, yeah, absolutely. And we have both options where you can get that traditional paper chart and overlay it. I like to have both on at the same time because then you'll have the ability to tap on airports that you wouldn't be able to necessarily tap on if you had a paper chart without pressing and holding directly on the map. So. Um, yeah, we've got several different settings in here. We also have different modes, so VFR, low IFR, and high IFR. And we'll just have different defaults for each one of those. The airspace will also only show depending on what mode you're on now. Um, but we still have our various settings for hiding airspace above a certain altitude that you're not flying, highlighting airspace that you're going to be flying through, um, also turning off airspace that is activated by NOTAM. Um, so that way, if it's only active by NOTAM, you can declutter your screen more and more to make it friendlier for the planning that you're doing. I see you've got low IFR, high IFR, high IFR. When you have VFR, that basically removes all that stuff and simplifies things? Yeah, so it's going to remove, uh, or by default, turn off things like airways. airways. Have the fixes still turned on, but we do have a setting where you can actually go in and turn off things like the ATC sectors so you don't have to deal with those. If we had waypoints turned on, you can turn off the RNAVs and the fixes so you just have visual reporting points. Even now, you can get rid of the helicopter ones if you're not flying helicopter, so that way it's more specific to fixed wing. But if you are flying helicopter, leave them on. You have the customization to be able to, to do all of that now. I know a lot of people use IFR fixes as handy waypoints for planning their routes. Yep. Um, yeah, so it's really up to how you feel um, you need to adjust the map at this point. Um, even with the biggest difference between IFR and VFR outside of the airways is if I was to go to low IFR, I'm going to remove some of those VFR only features like entries and exits into an airport to make it again friendlier depending on the type of flying you're doing. And in terms of uh, things like weather depiction and no time de depiction for VFR flying. Uh, can we have a look at that? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, it's a beautiful day. So <laughs> no, we picked a day when there is no weather. Yeah, the one year where we don't have weather at Aero. Um, yeah, so just a quick reminder, the way that we have the layer selector set up, um, on the left-hand side is going to be all the various charts or aeronautical information. On the uh, right-hand side is going to be all the different types of weather layers that we have in there, uh, from things like radar, uh, 
um, satellite information, icing and turbulence information. Um, you can even do things like cloud forecasts. Uh, we have layers like uh, winds and temps, which will remind you of other various weather apps that you've seen before. Um, turning on things like NOTAMs, where you have that graphical depiction of NOTAMs around um, places like Europe. So we'll color code them depending on how severe they are from either red to um, gold and then gray. And soon we'll have actually another color um, with yellow. Um, so that way there's a clearer differentiation between what is active and what is upcoming. Um, so we'll have that come soon. Uh, we've also been working on future graphical NOTAMs because we know that's been a big request, especially here, to be able to say, I want to see NOTAMs for the next 48 hours. What does that look like so I can plan my flight properly? Um, so we'll expect that probably later this year. Um, if you are flying in places like Germany, you can also do the GAFOR as well, yeah. and which, again, you can see it's beautiful, it's beautiful down day. here in southern Germany um, at the moment. So there's quite yeah. a bit on here, plus we have the profile view where you can add weather information if you're on Performance Plus, um, which spreads that forecast along your whole route so that you can get a better understanding of, okay, this part of my route, this is what clouds or icing or turbulence is going to look like, and then it changes um, throughout your flight. That's almost like a, a grammar kind of thing. Similar, yeah. Yep, and then we've added things even in there now, pulling in weather information. Let me see if I have a quick route. Um, like wind information in there so that we can do things like ground speed. So now you can get an idea of what does your ground speed look like at different portions of the flight so that you could make adjustments. So like for instance, this, this, this one, um, when you're a little bit lower, it's going to be slower in this middle section than it is climbing up. And then you could descend and get some better speeds in there as well. So more options uh, for different pilot types. Okay, and, and <clears throat> what's going on with Sentry? Yeah, so Sentry, uh, we still have the Sentry Mini, Sentry, and Sentry Plus. Uh, the Sentry and the Sentry Plus um, still have the carbon monoxide detection, which has been a great savior uh, for especially piston pilots. Carbon monoxide still being one of the leading causes of pilot deaths because it's you don't know there's an issue mm. until after. Until until you never know sometimes. Exactly, and the benefit of something like this is not only do they have audible alerts on each one of the devices themselves, they'll pop up notifications in the middle of the four flight screen, and if you have Bluetooth uh, headset on, it will do an audible it's part notation. Of the exactly, so we're still very, very focused on safety there. Um, we've done a lot of work talking to various um, safety organizations in the US and otherwise about that carbon monoxide detection because there aren't a lot of choices out there on the market for um, what you could do for carbon monoxide. No, and we've obviously got in the UK now a regulation where it's a requirement to have a, an active carbon monoxide detector. I mean, it's, fa it's fairly broad in for how you can meet that demand, you could take one from your house if you want and take obviously that would be a bad thing for the people left in the house um, yeah yeah you <laughs> definitely don't really want, you want something integrated you do and I mean these are made specifically for aviation so they're going to have longer battery lives they're rechargeable um, you're gonna get ADS-B you're gonna get um, GPS which even when you're up in the air sometimes your iPad or your iPhone can't get a great GPS signal these are gonna have dedicated antennas for that um, when you're looking at something like the Century Plus, it has FLARM um, capabilities. You don't have to change modes of anything. Um, we've added extra antennas so that you can have uh, 1090, 978, and uh, FLARM on all at the same time. So wow. if you were to travel to the US or somewhere else, um, you're ready to go. You don't have to worry about any settings. If it's the first time someone's seen Four Flight, there, there's a huge amount of stuff. Can you just talk us through the Discover tab? Yeah, no problem. Um, so this is something we added last year. Um, you'll find it under the More section and then Discover. And we have a whole education section in here. So the videos and different educational materials that we traditionally have on our website, we realize that it's easier to have them in the app and be able to watch these on the go or even from the comfort of your home. Um, so we have things like our webinars, which we continue to keep up to date each time we do a new one. So if there's any new features, they're gonna be right in here. Um, and then we also broke it down by getting started. What are the basics of flight planning? Looking at the maps and the charts. Um, and then 
we are going to keep adding to this section. We really, really are starting to focus even more on education, getting outside of the traditional manual of going and reading how everything works. Um, Nobody reads a manual. No. <laughs> Somebody yesterday told me they've read the whole thing and they've only done two flights on four you, flights. You found that one person. One person wanted to read 400 plus pages. So good, good for them. I mean, hey, that's how you learn. But I prefer learning on the fly with videos. Personally, what I like to do is I watch the video as there's something that comes up that I'm trying to learn about. I'll pause the video, go try it and come back. Um, and I think this is where having this directly in the app really makes sense.